When it comes to printing t-shirts from home, the heat press is the crowd favorite. But it's gonna cost you around $1,300 to get started. For a lot of new entrepreneurs out there, the heat press can be a little intimidating. Can we get the same results for my $25 iron-on kit? By the end of this video, it'll be up to you to decide if you should go big or stay home. So for this challenge, we're gonna put ourselves in a scenario that you may find yourself in. We need shirts by tomorrow. We're going on a company outing. We have 10 employees, so I'm gonna make five shirts and John's gonna make five shirts. The materials I need for this, I was able to get at my local retail store. The transfer paper by Pen Gear was $11.64 and the iron was $10.63. My total being less than $25 for the equipment I needed, and I'm able to use them for 15 shirts. On the other hand, this $1,300 setup will get your brand and business legitimized. And I got everything featured here from heattransferwarehouse.com. They're making it easy for you to start a t-shirt printing business from home, your garage, or a professional shop. Really good people to do business with, and we will be linking their information in the description of this video down below. Now this heat press is a Wallet Press Pro and will run you $12.95 and $5 for each Supercolor heat transfer. Now I can't stress this enough guys, when it comes to making t-shirts from home, if you truly want to get in the game and not look like you made it at Walmart, heat transfer printing is an amazing option that has minimal upfront cost and allows you to scale your business up. I gotta take a moment to appreciate this design. He's got everyone from the studio here. Look, check that out, that's me. That's my wife, Amanda, doing crochet. My initial approach was to design the team as Bitmojis, bringing everyone's personality to the forefront of this design. From here, I found the best possible placement that I thought would look good on a t-shirt. To get the best possible quality, you need to format the designs for transfer paper. To start this process, we need to select the proper canvas size, which is 8.5 by 11. We're using Adobe Photoshop, which we have included in the links below. FYI, you can get a discount if you're a student. Keep in mind that there is a bleed from home printers, and if you give yourself a half inch from each side, your artwork will be safe. These sidebars are called layers. In these layers, you can drop a solid color to see how it may look on the color t-shirt that you're considering. When using the light transfer paper, you would mirror the image, but when you're printing on dark transfer paper, it will print as you design it on Photoshop. You will see why this is important in a minute. Now that we have our art files ready, it's time to print our iron-ons with an inkjet printer. Placing your transfer paper on the loading area and submitting your project to print. Now that we have our sheets, it's time to choose our t-shirt blanks from Lane 7. Lane 7 has a wide selection of heavyweight fleece as well as staple tees in a variety of washes and finishes. You can place an order for your next production directly from their website through the links below in our description. I love these Lane 7 blanks. They fit my dad bod great. They're 100% cotton, which is required for these iron-on transfers. And the color scheme they picked is like on point. So let's get busy with the box cutter. Safety first. We'll do the we'll do the white first. It'll come out just fine. I might finish where I started. These hearts are gonna be really hard to cut around, so I'm just gonna cut them out and act like they don't exist. My lines are atrocious. I'm already minutes in to just removing the white parts. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this for you guys. I'm gonna cut all the white out, but I'm already tired of doing this, so we're definitely gonna go back in. I'm gonna place different shapes as the background layer on here, so I'll just be able to cut around those certain shapes. Bend the rules in our favor a little bit, nothing wrong with that. It's gonna save us time in the long run. I am so over this shit. And like Johnny mentioned, his super color is hot peel, but these iron-on heat transfers are... Cold peels, brrrr. We have to put our image side down. So image side down. We're gonna do the four finger rule. This tag right here is my center line, so I'm gonna line it up with my Y. It looks legit. Start in the center and work my way out. Because I just want everything to stay in its place. I don't want it to slide around. So it's actually grabbing onto the fabric. Extra. Put a little elbow grease into it. So far it's good peeling. This is actually looking pretty good so far. Holy cow. Wow, a little bit of a mistake right there. That's from me just dragging the iron. For all that smack I was talking. Not bad. Not bad, man. The iron on, it, it came to fight. It came to fight. Okay, that was easy though. That was the easy one. That was the white t-shirt. 
We printed it on a normal printer. Ink, it has to be an inkjet printer though. If you're in school, your school probably has inkjet printers. A lot of times your day job will have an inkjet printer at it or even the public library. So before we just start printing on my colored shirts, I do wanna adjust uh, my design. The reason I'm putting a border behind the image here is that the iron on transfers leave a residue if you don't cut your design out as close to the image as possible. On the white shirts, the residue is somewhat like a clear film, but on colored shirts, it shows up as white paper. Okay, we fixed our designs in Photoshop. It's gonna make the cutting process a lot easier and a whole lot faster, so let's bring them to life. Well, we gotta go borrow our friend's inkjet printer, so you guys can do this too. Two. <laughs> okay, guys, the mission was a success. We finally have our updated iron on paper and our image will now fit within the borders. You have to confirm that the transfer you're using corresponds to the color of the blank that you're printing onto. For example, I'm gonna be printing on this dark blue shirt. So I need to double check that I'm using the dark fabric. And it says on the back, dark fabric, so we're good. If you try to use a light fabric transfer on a dark shirt, your material is just gonna look like doo-doo. So I'm just gonna cut a circle all around here just to get all that extra stuff off. One down. Now when it comes to using the $1,300 setup, this will definitely save you way more time than having to manually cut out each design. And Supercolor makes it super easy for you to streamline your ordering process. All you need is a PNG image in order to get the best quality print, but if you're not able to get a PNG image, you can simply send them a JPEG and they're able to still provide you quality transfers. And as you place your order through Supercolor, they make it super easy to get templates that will match the products that you're looking to make whether it's hats, blockers, or umbrellas, just to name a few. Sipicola has a minimum order quantity of 10 and provides different shipping options to help get your order in on time. But what's the most important part about this setup is dialing in the prep work, such as the measurements, the placements, in order to get your orders out a lot quicker. Do you wanna lay out the shirt in a way that's, that's even here? You don't wanna have the neckline in the actual press. The more you do it and the more you practice these little tips, the better you're gonna get and the faster you're gonna be. So. For me, it's that, centered, boom. I have this ruler here. This ruler is to just kind of gauge where I want it based on the neckline. So we know that we want about three inches. So we got one inch, two inch, and we got three inches there. Another rule of thumb when it comes to actually using um, this heat press is that you can actually base it off of your fingers. So if you go four fingers, that's three inches. Like you can see it there, it's like literally three inch mark. Another thing when it comes to placing the t-shirt is using this label as the center guide. So you always wanna think about where is the center of the shirt, where is the left and right? So this label will help you know where the center is. Your fingers, the three inches, will help you know the height. And then if the design is a little crazy and you don't wanna put it too far down, so what you'll do is you'll use this, this and this here, as the center of your shirt. The tickle points. Yeah, so if you're, yeah, the tickle points. <laughs> uh, we are now good to go. Let's do it, man. We're finally Let's ready, we're finally the shirt. ready. The shirt. So we'll throw it in the heat press and we'll hit it. We'll hit it with this little knob. And now we wait, 16 seconds. We got 16 seconds, what are we doing in 16 seconds? Paper, rock, scissors. Paper, rock, scissors. Oh shit. Winner! <laughs> we're now to get the next one. And now we peel hot. And now, we got family hood. All right, let's finish your order, sir. <laughs> yeah. Time's a ticking. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> so now, the fun starts.
And one thing I know for sure and for certain, pressing these iron-ons is gonna be a problem, no cap. So we just did a white shirt. I don't really wear white shirts, I wear black shirts more often, so let's do a black shirt and see how it turns out, eh? All right, hard part, I have to peel it over. You're left with this flimsy thing, jeez. It just says iron, it doesn't say how long to iron for, so. Seems all right, let's check. That's not too shabby. All right. Whew. We weren't perfect right here on the cutout, so dark green. The pros of iron-on. The iron-on method serves as a great entry point into making custom shirts. As long as somebody buys them, I can repeat the steps and save up for a heat press. Number two, it's cheap and I didn't have to order anything online. All the items in this method, with the exception of our Lane 7 blanks, were found at the supermarket. You don't need professional equipment, and you can borrow most of these tools from your mama's house. Number three, and this is how I would use iron-ons. You can make a sample piece and take photos to post online. I would then use those photos, list the shirt for sale, and fill the orders with a print-on-demand company. That way the customer gets a shirt that was made with the superior printing method and I won't have to put any money up front. Iron-on cons. The most obvious quirk of iron-ons is the low level of quality. In my opinion, when someone sees you rocking an iron-on shirt, they're automatically gonna assume you made it yourself. It just doesn't have that legit look. And because of the cheap look that we're getting from this method, you're not gonna be able to charge very much for these shirts. Number three, time. Y'all already know that time is money and this is where I really got beef with iron-ons. After the first couple shirts, it wasn't fun anymore, and the amount of steps I had to go through was quite frankly, super annoying. John's Walla Press has a big old heat source that covers the whole design at one time. It gives the entire transfer consistent heat and pressure, and you program it exactly how you want. The Walla Press does all the hard work so you don't have to put your back into the actual pressing. Number two, automatic timing. On John's press, he was able to set the clock to a specific time, and the heat press just opens up once it's ready. This gives the shirt perfect amount of time to absorb the design, and he ends up with an extremely consistent end product. He's also able to handle other tasks while he waits for the design to heat up. Number three, this wallet press will save you insane amounts of time. John was able to fill his order and he still had the whole day ahead of him. He didn't have to cut anything out, he didn't have to digitize anything, and he didn't have to worry about the color of blank he was using, and that saved him hours. To be honest, I'm I'm pretty jealous about that. After this test, I was pleasantly surprised with how the iron-ons performed, but still wasn't enough to make me want to use these again. The clear winner is the heat press and super color combo. Without a doubt, I'm going big and I'm gonna order me a Walla Press. And I'm sure some of you out there are saying, super color isn't the only transfer in the game. We compared them against other brands in this video right here. 